Good morning. Welcome to St. Sylvester Church and our Mass celebration for the second Sunday of Easter. We extend a warm welcome to visitors and new parishioners. Please stop by our welcome station in the vestibule to learn more about our parish and to pick up a welcome booklet and registration form. Please take this moment to make sure your phone is off or in the silent mode. The readings can be found on page 151 in the Breaking Bread book. Once again, that is page 151. The words to the psalm are, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Please sing the psalm after me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Thank you. If you would like to have your book ready, our opening song can be found at number 166, Alleluia, Alleluia, number 166. Before we begin our celebration, we would like to invite all children ages 4 to 6 to come forward and participate in the Liturgy of the Word, specifically suited for their needs. Please look for your children when they return after the prayers of the faithful. Our entrance song is number 166, Alleluia, Alleluia, number 166. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the Apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet 
of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world. But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, this is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in, into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was now with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And through, and through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you know, the world uh, that we live in really does not believe in mercy, forgiveness, and redemption. Divine Mercy Sunday, today, second Sunday of Easter, the octave of Easter. The world doesn't believe in forgiveness, doesn't believe in mercy, doesn't believe in redemption. The Divine Mercy. You know, there's this movie that came out Friday. I'm not going to tell you not to see it, because you know, when we tell Catholics... Don't read that, don't see that, right? Don't buy that. Just like God, he wasn't good at it either. He said, don't touch the tree in the garden. And what did they do? They went to that tree. It's like you tell your kids, don't go out with that loser. Your daughter ends up going out with the loser, right? So I'm not going to say don't see it. Chappaquiddick, for those of you that are too young... Chappaquiddick, almost 50 years ago, 49 years ago, Ted Kennedy, Senator Ted Kennedy. Now let me frame this, because I know your political minds are starting to heat up. I don't want your, bl your brains to, bl uh, to blow up. I'm not a Kennedy fan, believe me. I'm a New Englander, right? Chick, I'm not a Kennedy fan. Believe me. They're not, there's some up there, but I'm not one of them. I mean, really, a sad, tragic family, not to be emulated on the whole. The only decent one, honestly, in my estimation, Rose Kennedy, a woman who suffered a great deal, but a devout, faithful Catholic woman. Think of all these horrible men she had to put up with in her family. Right? So Ted's one of them. And he goes out boozing and partying with this young lady, Mary Jo Kopechny. Now, her judgment wasn't that good, right? because she chose him. Let's not forget that. You've got to get the other side of it. So they end up 
partying and getting drunk and he drives off uh, Chappaquiddick into the water, right? The car goes in the water. He escapes, leaves her in the car, doesn't go for help till like 10, 12 hours later, and she dies an excruciating death, you know, in the car. And of course the Kennedys do what the Kennedys do best, try to cover it up because they're a powerful family. Don't buy the Camelot stuff, don't buy the American dynasty type thing, nonsense. But when you got power you can, and money, you can make people do things, right? So terrible scandal, horrible thing, right? No question about it. And you know, years ago, uh, what did they say? It's kind of ironic if you think about it. Years ago, when the first Kennedy ran for president, what was the big uh, protest? We don't want a Catholic in the White House. We don't want to elect a Catholic because they'll listen to the Pope. The Kennedys don't listen to the Pope. <laughs> Believe me, they're very selective about what they listen to from the Pope, especially in regard to abortion. And, and Ted Kennedy was a rabid pro-abortion politician. But you know, my friends, apart from politics and scandal and all this stuff, he's dead. Miss Kopechny's dead for years. All the people involved in this incident, for the most part, dead. Why are we doing a movie on it? Why are we dredging up shame and guilt and pain and tragedy right now to make money, right? You go see it if you want. I'm not going to tell you not to see it. I'm not seeing it because I'm not going to waste my money. But look, the guy died of cancer several years ago. And you know, I, I, I'm sure a priest was at his bedside as he took his last breath to give him the sacraments, to anoint him and to absolve him. Do you believe that you're going to be absolved of your sin going back 50, 60 years ago when the priest comes to your bedside? You better trust and hope and believe, as I do, that your sins will be forgiven. And you know, do we want God to dredge up what we did 50 years ago? Think about it. Do we believe in mercy? Do we believe in forgiveness? Do we believe in redemption? Do we believe? Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, one time, and I have to, I'm sad to say I've had to do this one too many times, I did a funeral mass for someone who committed suicide. And you know, as Catholics, human beings, we get the whole funeral thing wrong. It's worse today than ever, I've got to tell you. Like when, let's get back to Mr. Kennedy, when he died, he said, he's having a funeral mass in a public church with the cardinal and all that stuff. Don't get your knickers in a twist, I told people. A funeral is not about honoring and celebrating your life. It's about praying for a sinner. That's what my funeral is going to be, praying for a sinner. Pray for my sins. Don't celebrate my life. I'm not that great. You're not that great. You want to feel great? Go to your therapist. Bonnie, you'll help them with that, right? 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 You'll spread it on thick. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. But when you have a funeral, they come, Father, here's the list of things. Yeah, I don't even know the person. Here's the list of things I want you to say because these are all the wonderful things. Right? Going straight to heaven. Let's have a party. What do we need a mass for? Pray for your sins. It's not about you and how wonderful you are. You don't present your dossier to God. Say, yeah, God, I know I did this, but look at my records here. I got good stuff here. So I said at the, the Mass for the person who committed suicide, I said to the people, can you imagine if your worst, most shameful, embarrassing, painful moment in life, your worst day, your worst moment, was just splashed out for everyone to see in public? Imagine that. A 
Imagine how you'd feel. Imagine the experience for you and your family. God doesn't do that. God doesn't dredge up our shame and our guilt and our pain. Right? He knows us through and through. So when Jesus on this Sunday came through those locked doors where the disciples were, not nice people, not nice people, they fled from him, they deserted him, they betrayed him, they denied him. What's worse than denying and betraying Christ? What's worse? Can you think of anything worse than that? And he didn't come through the doors and condemn them. And they certainly didn't say, here's my records, Lord. Check these out now. I know I, I did all this bad stuff, but I hope this helps. He said, peace be with you. The first thing he said, the risen Christ, peace be with you. And that's not, you know, the limp-handed, cold fish handshake that we give to each other during Mass. Shalom. God's mercy, God's peace, God's reconciliation, God's forgiveness to you. He forgave them. No ifs, ands, or buts. He forgave them. And then he said, now you go and forgive. Now you go and reconcile. Now you go and show mercy. Don't hold it back. Whatever you hold back is held back. Free people, forgive people, reconcile people. Show mercy to people. That's the gospel, my brothers and sisters. That's Easter. You know, God... I don't want to say God spoke to me because some folks in the media will say that I have mental illness. Right? But God inspired me. And this week, my friend, Father Olive, sent me a very nice letter. And he always sends me interesting letters with interesting things inside. And Father Olive, what is he? Is he 80? Don't tell him I asked. Is he 80? 81. 81. No, no, no. Father will leave. He's not 83. He's 81. Okay. He's adding some years. Well, he's old. But you know, he's got a young heart. He's a mercy man. He's a mercy man. He's an amazing man for his age. He's new of fresh ideas. And, and he sent me this letter. I'm not going to read you the letter, but the top of the letter was a a uh, picture of Jesus rising from the dead, coming out of the tomb, and underneath it with exclamation points he has ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, reconciled. Do you believe that you've been ransomed? Do you believe you've been healed? You, do you believe you've been restored? Do you believe you've been forgiven? Do you believe you've been reconciled? Do you believe in that? That's the gospel. The gospel is not dogma. Our faith is not doctrine. Our faith is not even all primarily about morality, which is a consequence of what we believe. Our faith is about the merciful love of God, which is given to us all the time, undeserved. There was this guy on a talk show, I was listening to a talk show this week. Usually he's a pretty good political, social commentator. But even good people say stupid things. I do all the time. I don't know about you. But he says to his daughter, Well, you know, forgiveness has to be deserved. What? What? Stay on the politics. You don't know what he's talking about. Forgiveness is never deserved. Forgiveness is grace. Forgiveness, the very nature of it, is undeserved. You get what you don't deserve. God loves us and forgives us for no good reason whatsoever. No good reason. That's grace. Right? That's what ransom means. Ransom means we get you out of prison. Right? You didn't pay anything. God paid it. God took care of it. It's given freely. And then, you know, if you take a bulletin today, you'll have this beautiful image of Jesus, the divine mercy. And it says, today is a day of extraordinary grace and mercy, a day when all can be forgiven. A day when all can be forgiven. Every day is a day when all can be forgiven. 
all can be forgiven any day. Today is an extraordinary day. Do we believe in that? Then I saw these little signs. I look at little signs at the corner of the road. Don't want to look at too many signs, you go into the ditch. But, and you know, it says, little sign, beautiful sign though, profound message. It says, on your worst day, I love you. You seen those signs? On your worst day, I love you. That's God's message. On your worst day, on my worst day, God loves me, God forgives me, God heals me, God reconciles me. That's the good news. The rest of it's the crap in the media. That's the good news. That's what we believe in. That's what makes us Christians, followers of Christ, right? But what do we do? We want to dredge up people's pain and sh people's shame, people's guilt, people's past. You married people do that all the time. What happens when you get in a fight? I know none of you fight. None of you fight. You get in an argument, you fight, whatever you do. You throw the pans, whatever you do. Anyway, and then what happens with the fight? You get off message. Fight about the thing you're fighting about. And what do you, you dredge up all the stuff from the past and you bring up the mother-in-law, right? Which is a real problem. You're in a hole you can't get out of now. I, I, this, is, this is what people do. We like to dredge up the past. We like to dredge up our own past. People come to confession, right? And they say, Father, I, I, I may have confessed this before, but I'm confessing it again. Enough, enough. God says enough. You're forgiven. You're absolved. Enough. How many times do I have to hear this? It's over. It's done with. You're forgiven. You, do you believe it? But then, you know, then there's the other stuff that shows that we don't believe in forgiveness. People come in, they say, they do their sins, right? And they, the worst sins, people, you, you tell, sexual sins, right? The worst sins, you know, this is what people think. Sexual sins, the worst sins. Sins of passion. Sins of malice are the worst, but sins of And they sandwich them in between the, the little sins and they think I don't notice. I notice. <laughs> I notice. And, and, and there's something in me that wants to ask for details. But I never do. I never ask for details. But and, because, you know, at this point in my life, I say, John, you need mercy. You, need, you really need, I need mercy. I need forgiveness. I better give it if I expect to get it. And so, but then the person says, but Father, there's this, this, this uh, friend or there's this relative, I can't forgive them. I try to forgive them. I go to my therapist and my therapist tells me, don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. Just a few more sessions and we'll have you there, right? A hundred dollars, please, okay. Anyway, for me, you come to me, it's free. Sorry, Bonnie. Anyway, I'm a bargain. But anyway, but say, you're here asking the Almighty and merciful God for absolution, forgiveness, and you don't want to forgive someone? What's wrong with this picture? You nullify everything you're doing. Forget about the process or how therapeutic it, therapeutic it is for you, how beneficial it is for you to forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. That's what God is. That's what He's about. That's what He does. That's mercy, divine mercy. In a few moments, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. And we strike a bargain with God. We make a contract with God. We sign our name. We say, Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We say that before we receive the body and blood of Christ. We say that. We pray that. That's our bargain, our contract with God. Any attorneys here? We have an attorney here? No lawyers in church? <laughs> Don't they need to be here? I anyway, I had one at the last Mass, and I said, Sherry, I said, if you make a contract and you go to the judge and you say, I don't want to follow this, the judge will say, did you sign? Is that your signature? Yes. Anything in the four corners of the contract, you have to follow. So we hold up the contract to God and we say, I really didn't mean it. 
Yeah, but you said it. Before you receive the body and blood of my son, you want my forgiveness, and you agreed to forgive others. It's as simple and clear as that. You know, I get back to the beginning with Chappaquiddick and all that. And I remember when Mr. Kennedy had his funeral, and one image I have is in Arlington Cemetery when he was buried near his brothers. And let's face it, they were no prize either. God rest them. God be merciful to them. But the Cardinal Archbishop of Washington was there at sunset. The, the sun was going down. It was getting very dark. We've been to Arlington. It's a beautiful place. I've been there many times. I live there in Washington. And uh, he's saying the committal prayers. And I know some people are saying, why would you say prayers for this horrible man who did horrible things, terrible sins, perpetrated a, a, someone's death? Right? How, how, how can you say prayers for him and lay him to rest in, 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 in the church? And the Cardinal Archbishop read a portion of a letter that Ted Kennedy had written to Pope Benedict. And it indicated that he was a sinner and he made a lot of terrible mistakes. And he was praying for mercy. You know, when I've gone to the bedside of someone dying, sometimes they can hardly breathe, they can't speak. Maybe they're close to the to the edge and sometimes you know when the dying pray they pray like real simple things like Jesus mercy Jesus mercy I don't know about you I sense when something like that is prayed with sincerity when a prayer like that is, is, is prayed from the heart I think it's heard Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the lasting. Amen. With joy in Christ rising from the dead, we turn now to our heavenly and merciful Father with all of our needs that the newly baptized and newly received find in the church both welcome and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations, rich and poor, work together to share the world's resources fairly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Jewish people who have kept faith with the covenant Rejoice in the celebration of Passover. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who need God's mercy find it in the actions of Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our military men, women, and their families find joy and peace this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That humankind recognizes and protects the most vulnerable in society, the unborn and the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community strive to be of one heart, 
and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers we offer in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy, we thank you for being with us this morning and for hearing all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Our offertory song is number 171, Ye Sons and Daughters, number 171. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the oblations of all your people and of those you have brought to new birth, so that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But on this day, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. And so, overcome with Easter joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Especially, Father, we remember Lucia Petta and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Sylvester, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. ask our Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Remember the agreement. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant us peace and unity according to your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, the divine mercy, who takes away our sins and grants us peace. Blessed are those called to share in his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Our communion song is number 325, and the breaking of the bread, number 325.
been told, number 498. Oh, <laughs> 
Well, good morning once again, everyone, and a very special welcome to any new parishioners who may be with us for the first time. We're happy you're here, and we hope you feel at home here in your new parish, and uh, we hope your fellow parishioners certainly make you feel at home. We're glad you're with us, and if you're va vacationing or visiting here uh, for a short period of time, welcome, a warm welcome to you. We're happy you're with us, and we hope you consider this your parish away from home and come to... Uh, worship with us on, at Sunday Mass. Uh, this coming Saturday, the uh, 14th of April, we have our annual international festival in the parish center where we have food from everywhere, from the Philippines, Mexico, Poland, Vietnam, El Salvador, Scotland, Canada, Russia, Guam, Japan, Ireland, Germany, Puerto Rico, Italy, Chick. Did I say Italy, Chick? Yes, I did. Okay. Honduras and Colombia and many more. So it's wonderful. After the uh, 4 o'clock Mass, you don't have to come to the 4 o'clock Mass, from 5 to 8 p.m. right here in our parish center, the place is filled with food, right? It's like a living, deadly sin of gluttony, <laughs> right? So, but for $10, you can get a uh, passport. Your food passport? You need a passport. We don't want any undocumented food eaters in there. <laughs> we'll have to deport you from the parish center, right? Immediately. No. We need a pass. They call it a passport. I understand with that passport, for 10 bucks, you can eat about five pounds of food, right? If you want, if you want to spend 20, you can eat 10 pounds of food. But it's really great. And they have a silent auction and door prizes and music and dancing. And all the money from that will go to fund the Totus Tuus Bible School program this summer, which is tremendous, fantastic. The kids loved it. They took to it last summer. So we want to do it again. So all that money from the International Fest will go and support those kids going to Bible school here uh, next, uh, this coming summer. So in the Paris Center, you have to have a passport. So get your passport. You can buy them in the Paris Center right after Mass uh, this morning. And then uh, just an update on our pilgrimage to the Holy Land uh, from February 11th through the 20th of 2019. If you're interested, my friends, get going because it's over 30 people signed up now. 30 people, and I think there's more than that because some of them put it in the mail and, it ha and it haven't arrived at headquarters. But there's at least 30 people signed up, probably more, the max is $45, round-trip airfare from Pensacola to Tel Aviv. I mean, in between, you know, you, have, you don't get anywhere directly from Pensacola. Um, maybe to Mobile or something, I don't know. But, uh, and all the food, all the hotels, all the porterage, all the tours, everything included. And, you know, I know some folks say, I'm too old. Father, it's too late for me, right? I got all this money. They don't tell me that. You never tell your pastor you have a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I can't do it. My arthritis and my heart and all this stuff. Yeah, obviously, if you're a real mess, you don't want to go. But, but the thing is, I remember the first time I went, we were in Nazareth or something, and there was this old guy who obviously had cardiac problems, and he'd climb this hill and he was leaning against a house, right, like the house of Mary or something. And he was out of breath and he was like turning purple. And I said, oh my God, I said, I'm going to have a body to send back here. If I don't, I said, do you need any help? Can, do you need a glass of water? He said, Father, he said, I know what you're thinking. I know you're thinking I'm going to die. He said, but what a better place to die than right here in the Holy Land. So there you have it. I mean, there's another perspective, right? <laughs> you, 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 want, you want to die in Walmart? It's fine with me. But <laughs> you want to die in the Holy Land? I mean, that's got to count for something. If you die, and don't worry, I'll, I'll get your body back. Don't, no problem. <laughs> but anyway, please, if you're thinking about it at all, uh, make a decision to sign up. I hate for you to uh, miss out. Finally, we do have coffee and donuts in the Paris Center this morning. They're back. Hallelujah. 
So go over there and enjoy the coffee and donuts and get your food passport for the International Fest this coming uh, Saturday evening. Are you cooking, Chick? Are you doing it? Are you? Absolutely. That's the table I'm headed for. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may live forever in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. As we go forth, please join in singing our recessional song, number 611. Sing with all the saints in glory, 611.